John, hey, thank you for being here at Swiss Water Ski Resort to shoot your episode of The Ultimate Skier. Um, we appreciate you being here today with myself and Water Ski Nation for this uh, series we are calling The Ultimate Skier. So, your part is the two-handed gate, and it wasn't that long ago when I came up to you at one of your tournaments and told you that I thought you had an amazing one-handed gate. So, obviously, um, is this your first or second season? That's no, your second, right? Yeah, it's yeah. second season. Yep. Second season doing a two-handed gate. So give us a little insight, first of all, as to, you know, what made you change when, you know, obviously you could do a very good one-handed gate. Yeah, really the biggest thing behind that was consistency. It was going to sites that aren't perfect, going to conditions that are definitely not perfect, um, wind, anything on the gate that, made my one-handed gait more challenging. When you have two hands on the handle, all that moviness in the water and all that kind of dampens. And uh, so that was my big thing, more or less. That, then uh, just timing-wise stuff. Yeah. Too. So obviously you're trying to get a more consistent gait for 41. I mean, basically I'm sure at 39, whatever goes on, you can yeah, make it's it just, work. Yeah, and now with technology these days with the boats and how strong they are in the zero off and stuff, trying not to overpower power before the white water, basically. And with my one-handed gait, man, I wore a neck brace at one point. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, so yeah. I, could, I could put too much pressure on the rope too early and kind of whip myself into the, into the next turn or into one ball. So right. that was kind of my whole thing, is trying to be lighter and then build into the wakes instead of just burying myself on the gate and then just trying to hold it. Right. Just try to build into one, try to set myself up earlier throughout the pass. Awesome. So, and talk, us t talk to us a little bit about, um, like, what are your main keys? We're going to talk a little bit about what you actually do to get a good two-handed gait, and then maybe we're going to talk about to help somebody transition. So, like, what are, what are your main keys now when you're doing a two-handed gait? Somebody who's doing a two-handed gait, sees your gait, wants to make theirs better, what, what is your go-to? Yeah, just trying to keep my uh, upper body and my feet moving together on the start to pull out. Cause my biggest thing was when I started doing a uh, two-handed gate was I'd be like, perfect, and I wanted to go, and I'd just go here, but my feet stay behind me. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot different than a one-handed gate pull-out because one-handed pull, you kind of get a little bit lower, and you're you moving your feet in front of you to here, mm -hmm. so your feet swing a lot more. And on this gate, I feel like I just have to move my feet and try to keep them up here instead of letting them go all the way over here. Mm -hmm. Right when I get over here, you kind of have to let go because your shoulders come in so much. Right. So that was my biggest thing was just trying to keep my shoulders and my feet moving together. And it's right when you start from skiing behind the boat to moving is right the biggest critical spot. Because right, if you just go like this, then pretty much you can't recover. Right. So I was just trying to really think about just trying to move my feet and then get my shoulders to connect with my feet and then pull out. And that's probably one of the biggest things that I have to keep my mind on for a gate. And then just moving up and letting my feet slowly come underneath me. Anything fast, then it's back to that one-handed gate, kind of you know, swing too far. And if you watch a bad tuna gate of mine, that's it. I pull out, I'm here, I go here, I'm rushed. Like if I'm like on a short setup or if I'm like not paying attention or whatever and I gotta go, I'll go here, cause it's just old memories. And then I just stand up, my feet will swing and then I'm probably gonna have a heavy Gate. You're gonna fall back in because yeah. you're losing the line yeah, a little bit. I'm just gonna go shoulders straight into one. Yeah. So that's my biggest thing is just trying to start everything nice and smooth, taking your time to get your feet and your shoulders moving together. So when you stand up, everything's you're perpendicular. So so the movement of the feet and the body moving together is what gives you the line tension, speed balance out to the side. Yes. Correct. Perfect. Yep. That's awesome. And so. Uh, if you were going to tell somebody who was doing a, a one-handed gate now to make the transition you made, what would, how would you get them to start it? Same, same sort of thing. I mean, obviously you're pulling out a little earlier. A little yeah, you just got to play with the pullouts. Everyone's different. 
you know, um, watching people at ski school all the time, every single person pulls out a little bit different spot. So I'm not too worried about the pullout spot as in until we get the pullout consistent, yep. right? So the biggest thing is just trying to pick a spot, make that consistent, and then so you know, okay, we're going to go around the island, or when the bow gets to the pre-gates, we're going to start moving. Or right before the bow gets, we're going to start moving and just trying to make that nice and smooth transition because a lot of people with a one-handed gate will wait for the pre-gates and then just kind of drop their hip, move out, and then let their feet swing. And right when their feet get past their shoulders, they go here. And a lot of times it's really hard to get this back to the handle, mm -hmm. especially if you don't have any speed. So that was another thing why I changed was trying to keep that speed up, you know, trying not to, more movement, less speed. Yeah. So I just wanted to come up, stand up, glide, and then move through the finish of the turn. Awesome. And so is it a different um, attack angle from a two-handed gate or a one-handed gate? In other words, is it more crucial to be on the right-hand gate ball now, or is it as long as you got your speed out to the side that you, you can manage wherever? Or what what's your focus like after you turn in? You know, are you are you maximizing speed, or are you trying to maximize where you are in relation to that right-hand gate ball? Yeah, that's a tricky question because I like to have speed on the gate, but you can have too much. Right. Right. So I like to have more speed than not enough speed. But then when I finish my turn, I'm not really finishing my turn until the I try not to finish my turn until the white water, okay. and then I build into the right hand boat guy. So I don't want to. I try not to turn, set myself at the right hand, and just hold it. I want to be able to. Turn, build, 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 and then hit the right hand boat gate as I'm like exiting Got it. the outside of the That's second awesome. wake, if that makes sense. Yep. And so lastly, um, with your ski setup or letter or boat or whatever, do you do anything different? Um, is it are you mostly focusing on your ski setup and letter in the boat for skiing in the course, or is there something that you found works a little bit better to help you make a more consistent gait? No, I don't I've never really felt a big difference. Especially on a two-handed gate with the letter change. Okay. Um, big differences in ski setups for yep. sure. But um, the letter stuff, more or less, I try to get that from my offside. Trying yep. to help me. We can all kind of deal with our onside, but if we can get our offside going, that's where big scores come out. So I'm just always trying to get the letter and the ski stuff more or less to get my offside, which is kind of my gate. Yep. So it all kind of flows together. It's all one but, and the uh, same. Normally, if my two four is good. My gate's pretty good. Yeah. And it kind of, if my gate's good, my 2-4 is pretty good. Right. So it's kind of, they all work together. So it's it's a lot, it's a big puzzle, trying to put everything together and trying to get the boat, and every boat feels a little different, especially when you switch brands. So just trying to figure out what you can do different behind those boats. Really, for me, I don't try to change the boat settings or the ski. I just try to change what I feel personally because I know I can adapt or change a little bit throughout the past or throughout the set, then changing the boat, and I have no idea if I okay, if I go back, what's that going to feel like? Or if right. I go here, what? Right. Right. So I just try to leave the boat stuff alone once I get kind of sorted. Yeah. So. Awesome. And so, give us your uh, 2019 highlight. What was that moment that happened this season where you woke up the next day and was like, "Man, I am pumped about that still." Whew. I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, this fall was pretty good for me. I skied really well at a few tournaments and uh, I went down to McCormick's for the first time in like five years and I ran a few four at 41 so I was pretty stoked about that and yep. just ending the season on a high I didn't get to go to Malaysia so that was kind of a bummer but you know we're back we're on the water again so that's good having fun and lastly uh, this series is about uh, you know the ultimate skier and we couldn't do it without having an episode about Andy Mapple so can you tell us sort of how Andy impacted you either growing up um, as a skier or directly helped you at some point in your career? Yeah, Andy helped me a lot uh, early with the Maple. When he started the Maple stuff and he bought the Maple Lake in Orlando, I was skiing with him quite a bit and he was just helping me with gates and timing and trying to figure out stuff behind the boat. And he's he's a guy that he's done a lot for our sport and he's we wouldn't all be here without him, I don't think. Because yeah. he's done a lot for in every aspect of our sport and, you know, He's missed every day. Yeah. You know, it's hard. Yeah. Well, thanks for being here with us yeah. today. And Thank you. Uh, we appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks, Matt.